All right, just on my way out, I'm gonna meet a friend. Magnifique, j'adore. Ciao, ma belle. Just finished the NAMM show. Don't have too much of a voice. Flying back tonight. Look at this car they gave me. I got an upgrade. So I'm at this park and ride in Los Angeles. Just waiting. Should be here, should be here any minute. Um, he's a saxophone player too, so we're gonna go for a ride and probably talk about saxophones. You might, you might know him. Oh, there he is. Oh. What's up? Hey, man. What's up, brother? How you doing? What's up? Hey there, I just got back from the NAMM show in Anaheim, California. And before flying home, I got together with my friend Bob Reynolds, who happens to be a great saxophone player and teacher. Now, Bob has such a busy schedule that the only time we could manage to get together was for this car ride uh, to a recording session he had uh, later that day. If you're not already listening to Bob's music, I highly recommend you go check out his many recordings, uh, including his latest one, which I've been listening to on repeat since it came out. But I'm sure for many of you, no introduction is necessary. What follows is part one of our conversation where Bob talks about the importance of focusing on the things you can get done rather than stressing out and dwelling on all the things you should be doing but aren't. In part two, I'll be taking a quick look at Bob's saxophone and letting him know the repairs I would have done in order to get some better performance out of it. We also start talking about mouthpieces, so keep an eye out for that. All right, we're off. Ah, really? Wait, <laughs> there's gotta be a way to mute that. By the way, if I look weird while I'm doing this, it's because I don't know where I'm going. So, and maybe this thing is not a crazy <laughs> spider. Oh, wow. White. This isn't really helpful. Do you notice that? Like, it's not, it's not helping. Nope, that won't work. It's super dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> you normally put it. I just, well, I don't normally, I, I normally kind of do this, Jay, yeah, this sadly. Oh, that's I just, that's it's not good. But that's like LA style. Right? Yeah. yeah, I definitely was supposed to make that right hand turn, but no big deal. I hope that cop doesn't see the camera. Okay, good. <laughs> Is this illegal, do you think? Uh, yeah. Uh, and of course, anything you wanted to talk about. Okay. Because you do your own vlog. Yeah, I used and to. I know, and this is what I wanted to ask you about. <laughs> Why did I stop? I'm, yeah. Oh. Well, no, oh. I wasn't going to ask you that because what I was going to say is, first of all, like, I'm not the only one that misses the vlog. Well, thank you. All saxophone players, I think, want the Bob Reynolds vlog back. But I also know there's probably a good reason. And I, I, I was thinking that, you know, you prob you have to, you got a lot of things going on. Yeah. And it, And you had to make a choice at some point, like, something else is taking priority and I said you know what I'm, I'm just assuming that yeah and that's like part of a thing for a lot of people like they want to play music let's say but yeah they can't find the time to practice you know and it's about totally. like you got to make a you got to make a choice and prioritize things so maybe I, you can talk that's about that. exactly that's exactly it um, I would say that's it is totally that and for me um, so the, just a quick backstory on, on making those videos. I, I, it happened accidentally when I first started and it was just, a, it, I didn't even know, I, I attributed that title to it only because I'd seen a few other people doing it and I, and I knew that I was gonna do it every day. I didn't have a plan for like how long I was gonna do it. I just was gonna do it every day. <laughs> um, I was gonna do it every day as a way to get myself to utilize this space. I'd, I'd finally, like probably every you know, musician, but certainly saxophone player, uh, for many, many, many years, I thought, boy, if I just only had my own soundproof practice space, I would practice all the time. And years and years and years and years go by. I finally am in a position to do this and, we, and build this studio. And, um, and I was afraid I wasn't going to use it, like use it the way I intended. And meaning sort of uh, in the hours that are in the non-daytime hours, does that make sense, right? So I thought, all right, well, I'm gonna make a video. I'm just gonna go in there and practice and whatever. And I'll, I'll just make a, a video a few minutes long 
and I'll put it up in the middle of the night and, and nobody will know about it except the few people that know about it, but it'll be just enough sort of public motivation for me to go in and, and do the work, do something within that space each night, practice, you know? And with two kids, um, I'm, I'm still trying to figure this out and, and I'm sure always will be trying to figure this out. My kids are now eight and four like how to structure a day, how to fit in practice time, how to do all the things, you know, that are necessary towards to keeping my career going, you know, just all the things, email, dishes, kids, practicing, writing music, that has not been happening enough lately. So I've experimented incessantly with like practicing late at night, practicing early in the morning, um, plenty of experiments with not practicing at all uh, you know that one that one wins a lot of the time um, and so I'm constantly on myself about this so the so back to the videos that's how the videos started and then they evolved for me I love I I should even more context before I ever touched a saxophone or even knew a thing about music when I was a kid uh, I did some acting and that, that made me want to be a director. So bef- like when I was 10, 11, 12 years old, I was making movies um, with whatever equipment I could get my hands on back then. I, lo- I thought I was going to be a director. I only discovered the saxophone because I was looking, when I was in junior high, I, I went into band to, to learn an instrument so I could figure out, how to, figure out how to write music for the movies I was making with my, you know, my younger brother and my, my childhood friends and stuff like that. And that's how I, that's how I even came to be involved with the saxophone to circle back in terms of why did I stop it's not because I and and it's not because I didn't uh, uh, how can I put this I mean there are there are a number of reasons but it is priorities it is time it is like all right I've got ki- I'm last year I spent 135 days on the road and I've got an eight-year-old and a four-year-old and so when I'm home you know I want to be with them as much as possible I and you know I you know, I'm a, I mean, I'm touring, I'm making records, I'm do, there's all these, there's competing priorities. And when I was doing, in the thick of when I was making those YouTube videos regularly, um, you know, it's a, for me, it's an eight hour edit session. There's almost no way to not have it be eight hours per video. So when I was doing those initial chunk, I mean, I was doing every night, it was every night, eight hours. I was sleeping like four hours a night. Editing is storytelling the way, when I'm making those kinds of videos, you know, so, it's it's like listen it's like editing music or review you know it takes real time to review the material. I'm gonna edit this, upload it before I get on the plane. Bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and it, here's another thing. It play, so here's the, this is the great irony of it for me. Another thing that went along with that was at the time I started making those videos, I was feeling very blocked creatively. I had some some things I'd recorded that I was sitting on projects I hadn't put out, and I was feeling very much like because I'm a, I'm a perfectionist, I'm. Su- I get in my way like no my own way I get in my own way like nobody's business I'm extremely self-conscious um, and like insecure about my playing about my writing about almost everything in that department so the videos were like a way that that I was gonna go all right by doing this by not doing it like every week but by doing it every day I would actually force that little internal editor voice into submission because I would just wear him out. By doing it every day, there was no like concern about was this like the greatest little video I ever made? It doesn't matter because I'm going to do it again tomorrow. And that was amazing. For a little while, it was so hard and so um, amazing, so sort of rev- revelatory to me. Um, because I just, I, there wasn't time to go, hmm, because for me, it, everything, every whether it's a video or a piece of music, everything could always be better, so how do you know when it's done? And right. so these records, for instance, I was sitting on, or what, I just did it again, I just put out a, a record last week, this Hank Mobley thing, I sat on it for a year, which for me is you sat small. sat on it for a year? Yeah, because I was like, I don't know if Wait, this is... You, you don't know if that is... Yeah, I mean, like, because Hank Mobley already recorded oh, man, stuff. Thank you for so, making that record get that record <laughs> I mean and this is, it's so it's great to hear this from you and hear this from so many other great musicians um, because it makes everyone else feel like oh wow I thought that was just me mm. how can someone that is so good on so many levels feel that too 
you have that opportunity to force yourself. Yeah. It's like when you have a, a concert to play, yeah. you yeah. know, a performance. Yeah. You got to do it. You can't be like, oh, I'm not going <laughs> right. to go out on stage. Right. You have to do it. Right. And if you force yourself to put a vlog out every day, you, you're you just going to do it. Right. And if you're just going to like, I'm going to post this to Instagram, you know, you're going to do it. And wow, the growth that can happen when you put it out there. You're absolutely right. And, you know, I'm great with deadlines. Um, one of the things I've realized that I, I'm great under pressure and great under with deadlines. But my mom pointed this out to me recently. She was like, you know, you might as well, you're better when you have a fixed deadline because you operate like you're under deadline all the time, no matter what. But if there's not actually something that's happening that you're moving, it, you're just in a constant state of stress, like in life, which I don't want to be in. I don't want my kids to model that. My, my four year old son is walking around the other day, the other morning, like, uh, and my wife Nora was like, no, we got to go do something. He goes, no, I can't. I got to write like a hundred songs and um, I have to put, the, I have to make this book. And he's walking around kind of like huffing and puffing and he's in his robe and he's just like, I got to write a hundred songs today. And I'm just, and she's looking at me. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I wonder where he yeah, from. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it, it, it's, um, it is a balance and, and you're right that the deadline thing is huge for me. Um, it's only it's the only way I ever have gotten anything done is sort of like a public deadline some some way and without some sort of structure to it it's like every day then then ends up feeling like I I, I sort of live under a cloud of of the word should I should be doing this I should be doing that I almost every moment I'm doing something, I'm like, I should be with my kids right now. If I'm with my kids, I'm like, I should be practicing. And this sounds crazy. It sounds like a crazy person talking. I'm aware of this. Like, I'm totally aware of it as I say it out loud. I don't want it to be that way. I'm trying to find ways out of that. Do but, you have any bad habits? Do you just like, like, like scroll through Instagram for half an hour? Or no, I'm pretty good about that. The, you know, I, well, I, I do from time to time, but I don't, I don't follow anybody on Instagram, so I don't even see what, but if you go to search on Instagram, you're gonna see that page, you know, which is like designed to suck you in, where it shows you the algorithm of stuff, you know, like, oh, look at this person, look at that person. Oh, right. You know what I mean? So I, I see that, but no, I, I, I'm actually pretty stringent about how I use that stuff, I, or I try to be. Like, I turn my phone off a lot, I'm in no one's in do not disturb mode, but that doesn't necessarily mean my mind isn't scrolling the infinite amount of things I could be doing at any one time. But you're doing, I mean, what I mean is when you're thinking I should be doing this, uh -huh. it's not because you're like, you know, playing video games on your phone. It's no. like because you're doing something else that is right. also important. Right, like to the, this recording session I'm headed to right now, which only kind of came up recently, like la last week, what is today, Monday? So yeah. a week ago, so two weeks ago, or le less than two weeks ago, I put out the Hank Mobley record. One week ago today, I went into the studio to record my new album with my working band, the Bob Reynolds group, my quartet. So literally a week ago, I was making a brand new album. And then today is this like three saxophone session with Greg Osby and Doug Webb, which Doug asked me to bring some tunes to. So like this weekend, I was scrambling to get some old stuff arranged and everything. Ha so the time has to constantly come from somewhere. So where do I pull the extra hours from to get back to this? Like how come how come my sort of YouTube video making has dried up of late? Like, do I pull it from the time with my kids? Do I pull it from sleep? How much does that, affect? if I pull it from sleep, how, what kind of repercussions does that have, you know, on everything else? If I pull it from practice time and that's, that got me a lot. I'd be out on the road with snarky puppy and going, Oh, I want to make a vlog about this, but I'm like, I need to learn. I need to be up, you know, on the top of my game for playing. Like I got to, you know, so choices, you know, where, what, what can go. So what I'm, where I'm at right now, with that is, is I'm really trying to think about like what advice would I give to somebody else? And I would tell the, somebody else who was kind of bitching and moaning like I am about competing uh, priorities. I would say, well, stop. Don't focus on what you can't do, but focus on what you can do. So like, what could you do instead of all the things you're thinking of that you can't do? And I get really bogged down by like, I, I would, I know, I mean, I, you, you probably saw this or I even told you before, but like, you know, I've been accumulating footage like there's no shortage of stuff that I have filmed, which adds an incredible amount of weight to my psyche because I'm I feel guilty that I haven't done anything with it. So then I've experimented with like ah, I'm just not gonna 
touch the camera, I'm not gonna film anything or whatever, because I, I feel this constant need to like, so as if like from the last video I made, I need to somehow make this perfect 10 minute video that encompasses everything I've done in my, it's crazy, it's, it's ridiculous and I know it, but that's still what's going on in my head. Like, oh, I wanted to make this video when I was playing at the Monterey Jazz Festival with Snarky on my birthday. And then this one, I played a concert at the first place I ever saw a concert. And like, there's all these things that are in my head about what I'd like to do. And then last week I was gonna, oh, I'm in the studio, it'll be about that. But a week went by, you know? And again, priority number one is like, I gotta be ready to go do the recording I'm doing today because that's, that's today. Forever, and that's today. You know what I mean? So, you know. I didn't mean to make you feel bad. No, no, sorry, man. You, we should make a new video. This just sounds like a therapy session. Um, 